Turkish coast, uh, or turquoise coast as they call it here in Turkey. Time for quarterfinal number three, world number seven. Maximilian Vekmüller of Germany going up against the world number 26, a former Olympian from France, Jean Charles Valdez. Representing Germany, Maximilian Wegmüller. On target number two, Olympic silver medalist for Rio 2016, representing France, Jean-Charles Valadon. Well, here we go. Max Vekmüller, the 26-year-old German, is the world number seven. He has had a cracking run of form, especially since uh, the restrictions on travel and international competition started to relax. But he's up against the experience of Jean-Charles Valandon, world number 26 at 32, has been to an Olympic Games before. It will be the German to get us underway. It's drifting up and to the left there, but not bad sighters from the archers to start things going, especially given you can see the breeze blowing in the background. This field is so hard to read. You've got to look at all the flags around you, lots of indicators there, but big hedge to their right down the side, and sometimes the wind can bounce off that and do something else, so it's difficult to read it. Well, consistent grouping from uh, Valdon. Can't really say the same for uh, Vekmuller, but comes away with a 24 in windy conditions. Not so bad. Valdon on for a potential 26 if he can just adjust his sight and get this final arrow into the 10. Gets it into the nine, over adjusted if anything, but a 25 is enough to take uh, this first set. Uh, Nikki, the wind is um, playing a really big part here. We've seen lightning stop play this week, uh, with no rain today, as we said, but it was particularly wet earlier on in the week. And now you've said this field is notorious for changeable conditions, and we're seeing it start to play a part with wind. Yeah, being so close to the coast as well, things can change quickly. Um, so the archers are really going to be aware of that and you know, go back to that motto of trust and adjust. And Lloyd, two different um, wind indicators we've seen there, one out and one, one down. But you know, trust and adjust, really shoot the shot you can, trust that you've shot a good shot, and if you need to, adjust it. Um, so, you know, again, on the target too then, no wins. <laughs> and then, oh, now, now a bit of wind. So it is really tricky, but they've just got to go out there and shoot the best shots they can. Yeah, I think it's, uh, that's interesting, those two wind socks. I think that they are there in particular to show what you were talking about with the hedge on the other side. The one is inside the crosswind that could come from that hedge, and the one further or closer to the target is, is outside. So you saw the difference was, I mean, phenomenal. And they're only a few metres apart. Yeah, these arrows are travelling around 200 feet a second out of a recurve bow. These guys are perhaps shooting around 45 to 50 pounds on their fingers, so it, the wind does affect where the arrow is going to land. And you see the flags behind blowing in different directions as well. It's not just about wind, it's about the changeable wind and uh, the changing uh, nature of the wind, whether it's blowing in direction or in speed at the moment. It is the experience of Valadon with the points. Beckmuller to shoot first in set two. Uh, 
Consistency again from Valadon. Hey. I tend to finish putting a little bit of pressure on Max Beck Miller. So, Jean Charles Valadon, a 10, will take the set points. He needs a 9 to share them. Anything less, and we'll be all square. Brilliant. Looks like it has just clipped the line. It is going to a measure, so it is a crucial measure here. It's either 27 apiece, but I suspect, Nikki, that has clipped the line. It was close. We're going to have to wait for the judge's uh, opinion on that. Uh, that magnifying glass is going to come out and make that decision. And that is what it's down to sometimes, just millimetres. Not convinced, then. Nikki Hunt, not convinced by... Uh, the final arrow from Jean-Charles Valadon. God, just got a gut feel. It was clipping the line, but very, very close. Clearly needing the measure. But either way, Valadon will stay in the lead. 27, 27. And it has stayed as 27. And that's why you're here as expert analyst. What gave it away for you? What made you I just think? thought I could see a tiny bit of yellow. I mean, we didn't have long to look at it, but for me, it just didn't quite look in. At, you know, so the 27 apiece have split the, the points. So it's going to be a 3-1 lead to Jean-Charles Valadon, silver medalist in Rio. Can he get back to the next Olympics? Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? And I was to say how much of that experience of not only qualifying for the Olympic Games, but having actually competed there, is there a sort of sense of entitlement, perhaps? I've already been to the Olympic Games. I really should win this match. Well, we're going to find out. Vec Muller trailing by two. Starting off high and left again. And the key thing here is that Thomas Shiro has already gone through and booked France's quota spot. Each country can only have one quota spot from this tournament. And uh, then it'll be an interesting case to see whether Valandon, if he was to go through, is in a straight shoot-off with Shiro for the French spot. Oh, that's drifted way out to the right. Love the reflection of the glasses. You can see right down the arm of the archer towards the target as well. Gives you a real idea of the alignment they've got. <laughs> Not really a consistent pattern here for Vecmar across all the three sets so far. The opportunity here for Jean-Charles Valdon to put himself within one set point of making it through to the semi-finals. That is more than enough. 28 plays 25. And uh, whilst Vecmer goes backwards in terms of score, Valdon is just getting better and better. Leads five set points to one. Momentum, whether the experience of the Olympic Games is making a difference or not, the momentum in this particular match is with the French archer. In an interview earlier in the week, he said that he didn't feel more pressure because of that silver medal he won in Rio. But inevitably, you know, sometimes it does give you more pressure. You've been there, you've felt it, you know what it's like, you want to get back there. It's, you know, it must be the most amazing experience of any archer. So maybe having that experience adds more pressure. So, I mean, he's dealing with it very well right now. He's a, he's a great archer. He might not be the higher world rank just now, but the experience he has behind him is phenomenal. It certainly is, and it would be a headache for the French Archery Federation if uh, Valdon and Shiro make it through to the same stage of, of the competition, of this competition, if they're using it as a qualification tournament. Yes, they'll be in different sides of the cut, um, so that'll be interesting to see. Can they both make it into the gold and have a real shootout for it? Um, that'd be great to see. Here we go, set number four, Vecmuller. Well, he's back against the wall here. 
What a great response. He's only his second to ten of the match. Really putting the pressure back on Jean Charles. Well done now. Look at his characteristic draw. And over into his chin, he's always done that. Must be off putting having that camera right in your face now. He can I'm sure he can see it, but oh and into the eight. So now Max Vekmuller has got to take a deep breath, can keep his composure. He's put it in the eight, which is what he needed to put this one out of reach. Shaking his head there, but hey, Max, you just got a couple of points, and that's put you right back in the match. And clearly, and perhaps more importantly, it showed that you could put Valdor under pressure. Another eight from him is not the greatest end to the uh, set for him. Not what he would have been looking for, especially knowing that it was out of reach. Vekmuller has got two more set points. He's within two as we go into the fifth. Uh, okay, Nikki, here's a question for you. <laughs> Five one down. Has Vekmuller gone into that fourth set and gone, this is gone, it's done? relaxed, no more pressure on him, and then just bang two tens in, and that's enough to put a pressure on, on Valadon. Yeah, sometimes that is enough. You know, you just think, well, there's nothing I can do now. You know, I've got nothing to lose, so go out there. And yeah, I came back with a 28, which is great. And, you know, the other complication of this is in the next um, round, we're going to see another German athlete. So it's just so key that even if you lose, you shoot as high as you can, because if his teammate loses in the next match, it'll be the highest loser. And, you know, there's just so much at stake. Just shoot the best you can every, each and every arrow. Well, it certainly is. He's still trailing Vekmuller. So the world number seven, remember, who's had a brilliant run of form. He's got himself back into the match here. He's pushed it into a fifth. He needs to win this one clearly over the next three arrows to take us into a shoot-off and starts with a beautiful nine. So I mean, hey. shaking, but straight in the ten, he had to put the pressure on. He's got to win some points in this set. Well, I had a wobble in the fourth set, but Jean-Charles Valdon is on for a perfect here. Needs a big score. And it looks like that's another nine. So a 28, a good score from Max Vekmuller. But an eight is enough to draw level in the set points and get the one point he needs to go through to the semis. Oh, you saw the expression on his face. He saved the very best for last. And it was an absolutely superb, perfect 30 to finish off that quarterfinal in style. Jean-Charles Valadon is through to the semi-finals here in this uh, continental quota tournament in Antalya. He's been to the Olympics once before. He stood on the podium at the Olympics once before. He's now through to the semi-finals here. And the question really is, what are France going to do? Because they now have Thomas Chiro and Jean-Charles Valadon through to the semi-finals of the Continental Qualifier. And we just don't know how the French are going to select their team.